Yeah, good evening, children. Good evening, online students. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Good evening, good evening children.
Um, can you go to the first slide for just a minute? Yeah. Yes, and thank you. Yeah. Yeah, simplify this and tell me the value. <clears throat> yeah, simplify this one. Twenty five. Just twenty five. Not just 25. Twenty? Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand. Yeah, correct. Twenty-five thousand. Okay. So we'll understand the question and the solution. So how many bricks of size 12 centimeters by 6 centimeters by 4 centimeters? So the dimensions of one brick is given to us. One brick, the dimensions of one brick are length 12 centimeters, breadth 6 centimeters, uh, height or the thickness of the brick 4 centimeters. So what is the volume of one brick? L into B into H. Volume of one brick is L into B into H. Brick is a cuboid. Volume L into B into H. So 12 into 6 into 4 centimeter cube is the volume of one brick. How many bricks of this size are required to construct a wall? How many bricks are required to construct a wall? 10 meters long. Be careful with the unit. 10 meters long. The dimensions of the brick in centimeters. 
wall and meters, 10 meters long, 4 meters high, and 20 centimeters thick. The thickness of the wall is 20 centimeters. So how will you find the uh, uh, volume of the wall? 10 into 100. Okay, so 1000 centimeters into 4 into 100, 400 centimeters into 20 centimeters. Right? So length is 1000 centimeters, length of the wall, 1000 centimeters, height of the wall, 400 centimeters, and uh, thickness, uh, uh, 20 centimeters. So L into B into H will give us the volume of the wall. But the wall is not only made of bricks. To, you know, like <clears throat> hold the bricks together, there is a mixture of sand and cement used. We can't just arrange the bricks and say it's a wall, right? The bricks have to be held together, right? And the bricks are held together with this uh, mixture of cement and sand. So the volume of the wall is not only the volume of the bricks. Volume of the wall is the volume of the bricks and the volume of the cement and sand mixture. When we say volume of the wall, it's not directly equal or it's not just equal to the volume of the bricks in it. Volume of the wall is volume of the bricks and the volume of the cement and sand mixture in it. Nothing else. Bricks are arranged and uh, this mixture of cement and sand is splashed on the bricks, which bind the bricks together, and that's the wall. Now it's given that one tenth, one tenth of the volume of the wall is occupied by the cement and sand mixture. One tenth. If I say one tenth of the class are girls, so nine tenth are boys. If I say ten percent of the class are boys, then ninety percent of the class are girls. So when it's a percentage, you subtract from 100. If 20% are girls, 100 minus 20, 80% boys. When it's percentage, you subtract from 100. The total is 100. When it's a fraction, the total is 1. <coughs> Sorry. So if one tenth of the volume of the, so wall like, uh, no, excuse me, but wall like class, you know, so there is bricks like girls and cement and sand like boys. Wall is the class. <clears throat> Wall like the class. Cement and sand like boys and bricks like girls. So if one tenth is cement and sand, then what will be uh, bricks? One minus one by ten. One minus one by ten. What is one minus one by ten? Nine by ten. Nine by ten. Take the LCM and subtract, you get nine by ten. Okay, now tell me without subtracting, if uh, four levens, if four levens of a class are boys, then what part of the class are girls? Seven by 11, seven by 11, right? Seven by 11. <clears throat> if um, two sevens are girls, then five by seven boys, correct? Five by seven boys. <clears throat> So the uh, cement and sand mixture occupy one tenth of the volume of the wall. So one minus one by ten, nine by ten. This part of the wall is occupied by the bricks. But the dimensions are given of the wall. The dimensions are given of the wall. So when you find L into B into H for the wall, you are getting the volume of the wall. Nine by ten of that is the volume of the bricks. 1 by 10 of that is the volume of the cement and sand. Cement and sand. So when you do L into B into H, see here, when we find the volume of the wall, volume of the wall, L into B into H, this is the volume of the wall, which means it is the volume of the bricks as well as the volume of the cement and sand. When you find, because the dimensions of the wall is given, Length of the wall, breadth of the wall, thickness of the wall. So when you find the volume using the formula LBH, you get the volume of the wall. Now volume of the wall is made up of two volumes. Volume of the bricks, volume of the cement and sand. Two volumes. You want only the volume of the bricks. So the volume of the wall, 9 by 10 into the volume of the wall, will give you the volume of the bricks alone. If you find 1 by 10 into the volume of the wall, you will get the volume of the bricks, uh, sorry, cement and sand alone. <clears throat> so we are interested in finding the volume of all the bricks. 
not the volume of the wall. We are interested in finding the volume of the bricks. Because how do you find the number of bricks? How do you find the number of bricks? Number of bricks is equal to volume of all the bricks in the wall divided by the volume of one brick. Always you find the number, it is volume by volume or area by area. Area divided by area will give you a number or volume by volume will give you a number. Now to find the number of bricks, it is the volume of that big thing by the volume of each small thing. So the big thing is the wall. So volume of all the bricks in the wall, not volume of the wall. If the if if it is given that the wall is made of only bricks, there's nothing else. Then the volume of the wall, the volume of the bricks, both are the same. But here it's given the wall is made up of bricks as well as the uh, mixture of cement and sand. So when you find the volume of the wall, it has the volume of the bricks and the volume of cement and sand. So number of bricks is equal to volume of all the bricks in the wall by the volume of one brick. This is the formula. Now, <clears throat> so this is for our understanding. So volume of the wall is volume of all the bricks plus the volume of sand and cement. So it's given that the volume of the sand and cement is one tenth of the volume of the wall. So the volume of all the bricks will be 9 by 10 of the volume of the wall. So find, we want the volume of all the bricks, right? So that is 9 by 10 of the volume of the wall. So L into B into H, convert all to centimeter. And this is what it is. You can even multiply and get that single number because we're going to divide further. I did not multiply here. Anyways, we're going to divide, simplify further. So I didn't uh, want to spend time multiplying. You can also multiply if you want. Because we're going to divide ahead, I did not multiply. You don't have to multiply. So this is the volume of the bricks in the wall. What's the volume of one brick? L into B into H. L into B into H. <coughs> now, as per the formula, number of bricks is equal to volume of all the bricks by the volume of one brick. Simplify, cancel, and you get 25,000. <coughs> Online children, please ask me if you have any questions. Okay. Finish writing here, all of you. Yeah, if you join yes. late, please take a screenshot. Please write along with me, write along with me.
So the volume A cube becomes 27 A cubed. So the volume of the new cube is 27 times the volume of the original cube. Volume of the original cube is A cubed cubic units. The new cube is 27 A cubed. What is 27 A cubed? 27 into A cubed. So the volume of the new cube is 27 times the volume of the original cube. The question is, what will be the change in the volume? Yeah, the volume becomes 27 times. The volume of the new cube is 27 times the volume of the original cube. I'll just write it here. So let the uh, original edge be A units. All right, volume of the cube is A cube, edge cubed. So A cubed cubic units. The new edge, it's tripled. Okay, so 3A. The new edge is tripled, meaning 3 into A, 3 into original edge, 3A. So the volume of the new cube will be, again, edge cubed. Edge is 3A, the whole cube. So 3A into 3A into 3A. 3A into 3A into 3A, 27A cubed, cubic units. Original volume, A cubed. New volume, 27A cubed, which means 27 into A cubed. 27 into A cubed. So conclusion, volume of the new cube is 27 times the volume of the original cube. You want to finish? Um, what is the word after four horses are? Tethered, tied, tethered. Okay, well, thank you. Tethered. Tied.
I'll come back to this slide in just a minute. Done? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. One more, ma'am. Very good. So the question says four horses are tied, tethered. Four horses are tethered with equal ropes, with equal ropes. So uh, supposing, uh, you know, uh, this is a pole and, you, and an animal is tied using a rope. When, it, when the animal moves around the pole, keeping the rope taut, fully stretched, what is the shape it will trace? Pole, animal, 
tied with a rope to the pole, the animal keeps the rope fully stretched. There is no slack in the rope. It's not loose. There's no slack in the rope. It's completely taut. Okay, so now the animal moves around the pole, keeping the rope always fully stretched. Then what is the shape traced by the animal? Circle, circle. When it goes around the pole, it will trace a circle. It's not going anyway. It's always keeping the rope fully stretched. The rope is always fully stretched. And it, so it's like trying to escape itself and it's running around the pole. So it'll trace a circle, right? Yeah, it will trace a circle. <laughs> okay. Imagine you, there's a pole, you know, when we were young, we hold the pole and we go around it. No, we keep our hands fully stretched. This is uh, computer age, so <laughs> we don't know what going out and playing is, right? We are always glued with the gadgets. Yeah, so going out. <laughs> so, so there's a pole and imagine you uh, hold the uh, pole with one of your hands. You keep your hand fully stretched and you go around the pole. So you'll trace a circle, your legs will trace a circle. You'll trace a circle. But now the animals here, the four horses, they cannot trace a circle because they are tied inside a park. They'll bang the wall. They'll try to trace a circle. If they keep their rope fully stretched and you know try to go around the pole, they can trace a circle, but they are inside uh, a square field. So they can only trace a quadrant. They can only make a quadrant. Yes or no? They can only make a quadrant. They'll trace the area of a quadrant. And the thing is, the quadrants will not overlap because it's given that the... <coughs> <coughs> so that they can just reach one another. The horses can just reach one another. So that's what it is. So this is the area that can be grazed by one the first the horse that's tied at uh, uh, the corner A. This is the area that can be grazed by the horse that's tied at corner B. This is the area that can be grazed by the horse that's tied at corner C. And this is the area of the field that can be grazed by the horse that's tied at the corner D. They're tied in such a way that they can just reach one another. So nobody can enter the other person's portion and graze. They all have their own areas. So this is the maximum area that can be grazed by this horse. This is the maximum area that can be grazed by this horse. This is the maximum area that can be grazed by this horse. This is the maximum area that can be grazed by this horse. So the horses can graze. See, whether they eat it fully or no, that much is available for them to graze. See, whether all the horse, you know, completely feed on the grass available to them, that we don't know. But the maximum area that is available to each of these horses is this one, this one, this one, and this one. These four uh, quadrants can be grazed by the horses, by the respective horses, right? So, which is that portion of the field that cannot be reached by any of the horses? Which is that portion of the field that cannot be reached by any of the horses? This one, this shaded portion. That portion nobody can reach. Why they are tracing only a quadrant? Because they are tied to this corner. They can only make a circle. And when they try to make a circle, they cannot go outside the field, right? So they can only make a, they can only trace a quadrant. So each of the four horses will trace a quadrant, leaving an area which is ungrazed in the middle, the shaded region. So that is what we have to find. Find the area left ungrazed by the horses. They leave it ungrazed because they cannot reach out to that portion. And since it's given that they can just reach one another, the quadrants look like, see, the quadrants will not be like this. You cannot draw quadrants like this, like this. Because they just, so that they can just reach one another. They can't reach, they can just reach. 
like i stretch my arm and you stretch your arm we can just touch yeah so like that they just reach one another so it cannot be like this so if the horse is here and the horse is here they can't meet at all <coughs> okay so square field square field four horses tied to the four corners the length of the rope used to tie each of the horses the same all the four horses are tied by uh, by means of a rope of the same length the length of the rope is not given but it's given that the horses can just meet so if the side of the <coughs> square is 70 meters and the horses can just meet correct so 70 70 by 2 this is 35 this is 35 correct what is this for the quadrant radius? What is this one for the quadrant radius? See here, quadrant. What is this? What are these line segments for the quadrant radius? A quadrant is a region bounded by two radii and one arc like this. A semicircle is a region bounded by the diameter and an arc like this. Diameter and an arc is semicircle. Region bounded by two radii like this, meaning we are talking only about semicircles and quadrants. OK, so semicircle, diameter and arc, quadrant, two radii and an arc. So you can see that here, there's a quadrant because the angle here is 90. It's a quadrant. Angle, angle in a quadrant is 90 degrees. Angle in a quadrant is 90 degrees and every corner of the square is 90 degrees. So what is what are these for uh, the quadrant radius? And that's 35. This also is 35. This also will be 35. Radius. This is 35. This is 35. Center to any point on the circumference is 35. This is center to any point on the circumference is 35. Center to any point on the circumference is 35. Center to any point on the circumference is 35. 35, 35. So R is 35. So what are the two things we have here? Square and quadrant. For the square, we know the side is 70 meters. So area of the square or the area of the square field is 70 into 70, 4,900 meters square. Next, we have to find the area of the four quadrants. Area of all the four quadrants. <coughs> area of one quadrant. Area of a circle is pi r square. So area of a quadrant will be one fourth of this. Area of a circle is pi r square. Uh, quadrant is one fourth uh, the area of a circle. So one by four into pi r square. So this is the area of a quadrant. And like this, how many quadrants are there? Four quadrants, no? So four into. See, write the area of a quadrant first. This is the formula to find the area of a quadrant. This is the formula to find the area of a quadrant because for a circle, it is pi r square. Quadrant one by four into pi r square. So this is the formula to find the area of a quadrant. How many quadrants like this? Four. So into four. So yeah, we know the four quadrants put together to form a circle, right? The four quadrants, they put together and they form a circle. Yeah, so four and four gets cancelled. So we're left with pi r square. <coughs> so find the area of the four quadrants. Four into one by four pi r square. Where r is 35, not 70. 35, radius is 35. So the area ungrazed will be the total area available, meaning the total area of the field minus the area grazed by the horses. The area of the square field ABCD minus the area grazed by the horses. The difference will be the area ungrazed. Yeah, please ask me if I'm not clear. Please ask me your questions. All right. 
all right finish writing all of you just a minute mom yeah yeah Mom. Yeah. Mom, can you show a second question? Second question. Yeah, second. Um, yeah, mom, complete it. Okay. Okay, complete this children. Uh, what is uh, one meter cube? This how many liters? Thousand liters. Thousand liters. One meter cube is thousand liters, or one meter cube is equal to one kiloliter. Both are the same. One kilo means thousand, and then one liter is equal to how many centimeter cube? Thousand. One liter is thousand centimeter cube. Please remember these two conversions. One meter cube is thousand liters. One liter is thousand centimeter cube. So what's the volume? What's the formula to find the volume of a cylinder? Pi R square H. Cubic units. So you will get the answer in meter cubed. Convert that to liters.
see if we are not comfortable with the uh, decimal numbers, you can convert them to fractions. 35 by 10, 35 by 10. If you're not comfortable with the uh, decimals, 35 by 10. Not needed, but if you're not comfortable, you can do this. Otherwise, you can cancel seven ones are seven zero point five times. That's all. This will make your job actually easier. Seven ones are seven zero point five times. So now the product. Was it 462? Yeah, 462 meter cubed. One meter cube, <clears throat> thousand liters. Two meter cube, two thousand liters. Three meter cube, three thousand liters. So 462 meter cubed will be 462 followed by three zeros. Meter cube, uh, sorry, liters.
So what makes 35? 35 is not the length of the rectangle. 35 is not the length of the rectangle. It's beyond that. So it's the length from end to end, from end to end. So the, the total, not area. Yeah. So now this 35 meters is made up of what? Radius of the semicircle, length of the rectangle, and radius of the semicircle. Come, let's come from one end to the other end. So what is it from here to here? This one. Radius of the semicircle, right? And this one is the length of the rectangle. And this one is the radius of the semicircle. These three line segments put together is 35. Yes or no? R plus L plus R is equal to 35. The length from one end to the other end. So radius plus length of the rectangle plus radius is equal to 35. Now, what is this 14? 14 is what from here to here. This is 14. So how much will it be here? 7 and 7, right? This is the center. 7, 7. So 14 is the diameter of the semicircle. 14 is the diameter. This one is 14. This is 14. That's a diameter of the semicircle. So radius is 7. So 7 plus L plus 7 is equal to 35. L is equal to 35 minus 14. So the length of the rectangle is 21 meters. Online students, what's the breadth of the rectangle? What's the value? 14 meters. Yeah, 14.
Okay, can you go to the, the first slide for a moment? First one, no? This one? Yes, ma'am, just a second. Yes, and you can move on. Okay, so perimeter is only the length of the boundary. Okay, so what's the length of the circle? 2 pi r. Length of a semicircle? Okay, let me not ask you. Some of you might know it. Some of you might have forgotten. So recall area. Area of a circle, pi r squared. Area of semicircle. Area of semicircle is half into pi r squared. Area of a quadrant is 1 by 4 into pi r squared. Length of this full piece is 2 pi r. So length of half of that is pi r, 2 pi r by 2 pi r. Half of this is the arc you see in a quadrant. So this would be half of this, no? so pi r by 2. So the circle length is 2 pi r. Length of half of the circle, pi r, because half of 2 pi r, pi r. Half of that, half of the length of the semicircle is pi r by 2. This one you'll find in a quadrant. In a quadrant, you'll find this length. So if you want to find the length of the circle, it's 2 pi r. If you want to find the length of only this piece, it is pi r. If you want to find the length of this piece, it's pi r by 2. But if you want to find the uh, perimeter of the shape, if you want to find the perimeter of the shape, this one is pi r. And this one is 2r or diameter. So the perimeter of the shape is pi r plus 2r. Similarly, the perimeter of the shape, the perimeter of the shape is this one is r, this one is r, this one is pi r by 2. So the perimeter of a quadrant, the perimeter of a quadrant is r plus r plus pi r by 2. r plus r plus pi r by 2 is the perimeter of a quadrant. The perimeter of a semicircle is pi r plus 2r. So if you find pi r, you're finding the length of only this arc. So that's what we have in the figure here. Length of only this one is 2 pi r by 2 pi r. The perimeter of this uh, figure is L plus pi r plus L plus pi r. L and L is 2L. Pi r, pi r, 2 pi r, 2 common, L plus pi r. L is the length of the rectangle, not 35. L is the length of the rectangle, you can see there. It's not 35, it's 21, length of the rectangle. Completed, children? Online children finished? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Ma'am, I can't see your screen. Yeah, please leave and join, no? That should help.
What's the value of x? Simplify and tell me the value of x, children. Seven, no? Huh? Okay. Twenty-two in the tables of twenty-two or eleven. Eleven twos are twenty-two. Eleven threes are thirty-three. Ten remains. Eleven nines are ninety-nine. Two remains. Eleven twos are twenty-two. Two ones are two ones are two nines are eighteen. Two six are one ninety-six. And now we have one ninety-six by four. So four ones are four fours are sixteen. Two nines are. So we have forty nine into seven in the numerator. After simplifying, after simplifying, we have x cubed is equal to forty nine into seven. So x cubed is equal to forty nine is seven into seven into seven. So x cubed is equal to seven cubed. Or you can write x is equal to cube root of. You can also write like this: x is equal to cube root of. Forty-nine is seven into seven into seven. So from three sevens, one seven out. X is uh, seven. Therefore, R is equal to seven centimeter. H is equal to four into seven. H is four into seven. Twenty-eight centimeter. To so find the CSA, what's the formula to find CSA? Two pi R H. Find the CSA of the cylinder. Two pi R H.
circumference meaning the perimeter. Okay, so the ratio of the areas of two squares is given. So square one, square two, area of square one by area of square two, ratio, right? So area of square one by area of square two, ratio is equal to 49 by 64. So small letter A represents the side of the first square. Uh, capital letter A represents the side of the second square. So how do you express area? A square, side square. So A square by A square is 49 by 64. Because area is A square. A square by A square is 49 by 64, which means A by A, the whole square is 49 by 64. So A by A is square root of 49 by 64, which is 7 by 8. So if the ratio of their areas is 49 by 64, the ratio of their sides, the ratio of their sides is 7 by 8. If the ratio of the areas of two squares is 49 is to 64, then the ratio of the sides of these two squares is 7 by 8 or 7 is to 8. Now we need to find the ratio of their circumstances. That means perimeters. We need to find the ratio of their perimeters. So perimeter is 4 into side. So circumference of square 1 by circumference of uh, square 2 is equal to 4a, right? 4 into side. 4a by 4a. 4 gets cancelled. a by a. a by a is 7 by 8. So the ratio of their uh, perimeters is 7 by 8.
Yeah, you try the you try this question. Sixty. Okay. Okay, that's it. You got this? Yeah. I think you got a negative value, but you ignored it, no? You? So the ratio of the two numbers is three is to seven. So let the numbers be 3x and 7x. See, whenever we uh, have to answer a word problem from linear equations, you need to divide the question into two parts. Use one part for assuming, for assumption, and the other part uh, for constructing the equation. So here, the two things given to us are, uh, the difference between the two numbers is 48, is one information. And the other thing is that the, uh, the other thing is that the ratio of the numbers is three to seven. So we have these two things in the question: difference between the numbers forty-eight, and then ratio of the numbers three to seven. Use one of it for assuming the numbers. Let one number be this, so the other number is that. Use one of this for assuming, and the other one to construct the equation. So I have used the ratio for assuming. I've used the ratio 3 to 7 for assuming. Let the numbers be 3x and 7x. So now you should not use it again. That's over. We've used the ratio. Let the numbers be 3x and 7x. Now the other information is the difference is 48. So whenever you write the difference, it's always the greater number minus the smaller number. So we have to write 7x first, not 3x minus 7x. 7x minus 3x, because 7x is the larger number. 7x minus 3x, the smaller number is equal to the difference, which is 48. On solving, you get x. And once you find x, 3x and 7x are the numbers.
try this. See, we can also use, uh, one second, we can also use uh, 48 for, uh, assuming the difference between the numbers is 48. We can use that for assumption and the ratio for constructing the equation. So see, how do we do that? <clears throat> What is the difference between the two numbers? 48, right? So let, let the smaller number be we do it in two ways. What will be the larger number using the difference? The difference of the two numbers is 48, no? The difference of the two numbers is 48. We're using that for assuming. So if you call the smaller number as X, what will be the larger number? Hmm? No. Ma'am, can you go to the before slide for a second? Thank you. Okay, so here, you know, though it is easy, we forget. We, uh, we make a mistake in assuming here. Yeah. Children, I hope uh, you're aware of what I'm explaining. Here we have used a ratio for assuming. How do we assume using the difference of the numbers. So you can assume it in two ways. You can call the smaller number as X or the greater number as X. If the smaller number is X, what will be the greater number? The difference is 48, right? So the larger number will be, <coughs> will be X plus 48 because the difference is 48. If the larger number is X, then what will be the smaller number? Um, can you actually put the second question, the slide which has the second part? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So the smaller number will be? <coughs> okay, see, one minute. <clears throat> This is the assuming part. Oh, even you have to make an effort to understand. <laughs> we cannot sit back folding our hands. <laughs> yeah.
See, if uh, you cannot say that, you know, I know this method, so I'm not interested in the other method or methods. Every idea is important. Now we are doing this first one by using the difference between the two numbers as 48 for assuming the numbers. And we're going to use a ratio for constructing the equation. So how do you how do you use this information? Difference is 48 to get the to, to assume the two numbers. So see here, you can either call the smaller number as x or the larger number as x. This is or. OK, I'm doing it simultaneously. If you call the smaller number as x. How do you so now we don't know if the smaller number is x. What is the expression for the larger number? We are like, is it 48 minus x? Is it x minus 48 or x plus 48? OK, so write this larger number minus smaller number is a difference. You have called the smaller number as x, right? So what will be the larger number? x plus 48. You can see here when you substitute, you get that x plus 48. So if you call the smaller number as x, the larger number is x plus 48. This is the assuming part. I have not, I, this is I'm not constructing equations or something here. This is just for you to understand how we get the larger number as x plus 48. If the smaller number is x, we don't know what to call the larger uh, number. So you can work like this and get the expression for the larger number. If you call the smaller number as x, then the larger number is x plus 48. So we have assumed using the difference we have assumed. Now we have to construct the equation. How using the ratio 3 to 7? What is 3 parts smaller number? 7 parts larger number. So 3 by 7 is smaller number by larger number. If you take the 7 by 3, then it is large. You can also take 7 by 3. Then you should write larger number by smaller number is equal to 7 by 3. But here it's given 3 by 7. So smaller number x by the large. <coughs> Smaller number x by the larger number x plus 48 is equal to 3 by 7. You need to cross multiply and work this and uh, find the value of x. Once you get x, you can get x plus 48. Same thing here. Here we have assumed the larger number is x. Now, again, another question is why smaller number, larger number? Why are you not saying simply let one number be this, another number be that? That's because there is difference, no? So you have to be specific. If it is sum of two numbers, you don't have to be specific. You can add numbers in any order. When you have difference in the question between two numbers, you'll have to be specific. You must assume specifically, meaning let this be the larger number. So this is the smaller number. When the question involves difference between two numbers, if the question involves product or sum, then, so then you don't have to say let the larger number and smaller number because you know you can multiply and uh, you know add in any order. You can do small number plus big number or big number plus small number. But difference is always larger number minus smaller number. So whenever the question involves uh, details about the difference, then you should be specific in the assumption. Let the larger number in the second uh, you know, method be X. So the smaller number, use this. Larger number minus smaller number is different. So substitute here, you get the smaller number as X minus 48. So again, so this, this is the assumption part. If the larger number is x, the smaller number is x minus 48. Now, smaller number by larger number is 3 by 7. That's the equation. OK, so let's cross multiply. So here you get 7x is equal to 3 into x is 3x and uh, 3 into 48, 150, 147. Oh, no. So you get 4x is equal to 144. x is equal to uh, 30. How much? 36. Right? Yeah. Once you get x, x is the uh, smaller number. So the larger number is 36 plus 48. Similarly, here, solve the equation 7x minus 48 into 7. 8 into 7. 336 is equal to 3x. So 7x minus 3x is equal to 336. 4x is equal to 336. So x is equal to 336 by 4. 
So here you will get the larger number because X is the larger number here. Eighty-four. The values of X will be different in both the cases. Why? Because in the uh, first case, X is the smaller number. You can't get the same value of X in both the cases. Because in the first method, X is the smaller number, while in the second case, X is the larger number. So in the first one, X is 36. So the larger number is 36 plus 48. In the second one, X is 84. The larger number is 84. So the smaller number is 84 minus 48. Yeah, take it down, all of you. Your parent? Okay. Mom, can you show the last slide for me? This one, huh? Yeah, Mom. Yeah. You have to take a screenshot because others are writing the writing from the next slide. Yeah, Mom, complete. Mom, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. Mom. OK. All right. Can finish it.
So a number is divided into two parts. So if one part is x, the other part is 10 more. So x plus 10. But we need to be careful while constructing the equation. The ratio is 5 is to 3. 5 is more than 3, right? So you should write the greater part by the smaller part. So the equation is x plus 10 by x is equal to 5 by 3. All right, so cross multiply. The ratio is 5 is to 3, 5 parts more than 3 parts. So you should write the greater uh, part of the numerator. x plus 10 is a greater part by the smaller part x is equal to 5 by 3. So once you get the two parts, the number is add the two parts and that's the number. Online children, use the emoji, raise your hand. Ashwarya, you're there. Saujanya, Harsha, and Gayatri. Okay. Since it's time, children, I'll share this image. If you have not finished, you can complete this at home. All right? All right, children. So the uh, online children, if you have not finished, take a screenshot. Yeah. All right, children. So that's it for today's session. Thank you. Good night. Online children can leave the call. Good night. Thank you, Mom. Good night. Thank you.